everyone, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is one of Samsung's biggest flagship releases of the year. Literally. This phone is huge, it's packed full of features, it has a massive display, and the pricing is sky high. It clearly isn't for everyone, so for those that want the best of the best, does it live up to its promise? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and this is our review of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The Note 20 Ultra continues the sharp-cornered legacy of its predecessors, but in a more refined style. The line's defining color is Mystic Bronze this year, which is much more subtle than Notes in the past. The color has a gentle-looking matte finish on the back, and it doesn't pick up fingerprints very easily. Turn the phone around, and you'll see a massive screen, extremely thin bezels, and a very small centered hole punch at the top of the phone. Unfortunately, you'll find the same ultrasonic fingerprint reader as before, which is far from being the fastest under-display fingerprint reader on the market. Another new aesthetic touch is the bronze rings around the cameras on the back. They make the triple camera setup pop nicely, and it looks more elegant than the S20 Ultras. Actually, on that note, the entire camera setup sticks out noticeably, and if you're prone to drawing on a flat surface, you'll notice the phone wobbles quite a bit, so you might want to use a case for it. That said, the phone has a Gorilla Glass 7, aka Victus, on the front and back. Victus scratches as easily as any other glass, though hopefully the scratches are less prominent. Of course, you can count on IP68 dust and water resistance here too. The large 6.9 inch screen makes it the biggest note to date. It's a dynamic AMOLED 2X panel, which means you have the option of a QHD resolution with a regular 60Hz refresh rate, or a Full HD resolution with a 120Hz refresh rate. This limitation seems as silly as when we first saw it on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Not to mention, there are companies like OnePlus, which have phones with QHD resolutions and high refresh rates and no notable cost to battery life. In contrast to the S20 Ultra, the 120Hz refresh rate is part of an adaptive mode, which dynamically adjusts the refresh rate depending on what you're doing in order to save on battery. For example, if you're watching a 30fps video, you won't benefit from the screen refreshing 120 times a second. So it will switch to 60Hz when you don't touch it for a few seconds, but it will go up to 120Hz for supported games. For the majority of situations, this mode worked well, but it wasn't perfect. Where the screen really shines is brightness and sunlight legibility. We measured 1024 nits with adaptive brightness and bright light, but even when adjusting the slider manually, the Note 20 Ultra outputs up to 500 nits, which is impressive. This is the brightest AMOLED screen we've seen to date. You'll find that it supports HDR10+, and the color output is quite satisfying. Natural mode had faithful reproduction, while the vivid mode was less accurate but nice and punchy. You can alleviate this a bit by bumping the cool to warm slider to the mid-warm setting. While you won't be disappointed by the other side of media consumption, maybe you won't be as impressed. The Note 20 Ultra has stereo speakers using the earpiece as a second channel. They're not entirely identical in terms of output, and the earpiece lagged a bit in terms of loudness. In general, the phone scored good loudness in our tests at a notch below the Note 10 Plus from last year and its S20 cousins. It has wireless FM radio in some versions of the phone. The Note 20 Ultra 5G comes with a base storage of 256GB in Europe and 128GB in the US. There is also a microSD slot to expand that. You'll find the stylus on the bottom left side of the Note. It has the same mystic bronze coloring as the rest of the phone and a couple of upgrades. The stylus has 9 millisecond latency, an AI point prediction, which coupled with a high screen refresh rate makes everything you write and draw appear on the screen instantly, which means it's a very natural feeling experience. There are five new air gestures in addition to the old ones, which Samsung is calling Anywhere Actions. As the name suggests, they work anywhere in the UI instead of particular apps. There's Back, Home, Recent Apps, Smart Select, and Screen Write, and you can customize them to launch any app too. That said, you won't really find reasons to use them most of the time. The new Samsung Notes improvements, though, you might find more useful. The AI can read sloppy handwriting, and you can do everything from annotating PDFs to bookmarking audio. For example, you can attach notes and time sync them to voice recordings of lectures. Notes are also linked to the cloud, so they'll sync automatically between all of your devices, Windows PCs included. The phone has a 4,500 mAh battery, which is 10% smaller than the one on the S20 Ultra. Nevertheless, it got the same call times and standby performance, so kudos to Samsung for these optimizations. What surprised us, however, is that the Note 20 Ultra got improved battery life in the web browsing test. 
so we can speculate the new panel is more power efficient when showing predominantly white content. Our biggest surprise was that we didn't see any meaningful improvement in battery life in the video playback test. This is despite the fact that the screen's adaptive mode lowers the refresh rate to 60Hz whenever you have a full screen video. So yeah, the Note 20 Ultra performs equally well or better than the S20 Ultra, but it's not due to the adaptive screen refresh rate, which doesn't appear to bring any battery life improvements. There must be other factors at play under the hood, but we can only guess what they are. Charging on the Note 20 Ultra is rated at 25 watts. With the provided charger, you'll get 0-43% to in half an hour, which is decent, but less than the 50 plus percent that Samsung promised. It's also a little slow in comparison to some of its competition in this price range. The Note 20 Ultra has the upgraded Snapdragon 865 Plus chipset in North America and some parts of Asia. Everywhere else, it has the same Exynos 990 as what you'll find on the Galaxy S20 phones from earlier this year. I am bummed to see the gap between the two regional versions getting wider than it used to be. Not only is there no upgrade of the Exynos model, but tests show substantial advantage of the Snapdragon version in battery life and performance. That's not to say that this Exynos unit is a slouch, as it breathes through every task, but it still feels like we're getting served a cold dish here in Europe. The phone uses One UI on top of Android 10. If you're switching from an older Galaxy phone, you'll find that it's much cleaner and easier to navigate with one hand. But if you're upgrading from another device that has One UI, especially One UI 2.1, you won't see any major differences. The edge panels have been redesigned and the icons are now larger and the panel names have been moved to the center of the screen. Samsung's Windows integration continues to be unsurpassed. You can quickly connect to the Your Phone app on the PC from the notification shade. Samsung has also improved on DeX so that you can wirelessly connect to a TV. You can navigate the big screen using your phone display and then connect a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse. The Note 20 Ultra has a triple camera setup, which is different than what you'll find on the S20 Ultra, although not entirely so. There's a main camera with a large sensor, an ultrawide, and a telephoto with a periscope lens. The main cam's 108 megapixel sensor is the same as the one that you'll find on the S20 Ultra. It has an f1.8 lens that lacks the variable aperture of some Galaxy flagships in the past. The ultrawide with the f2.2 aperture is also the same as the S20s. The Periscope telephoto camera, on the other hand, is new. It has a native 5x zoom level and is stabilized. We have a dedicated camera review for the Note 20 Ultra and we've left a link to it in the description box down below. But for now, we'll do a quick overview so you have an idea of what this phone can do. As far as the main cam goes, photos have the excellent detail and color rendition that you expect from a Samsung flagship. The ultrawide camera has similar vibrant colors and the quality is quite nice. However, the detail level isn't class leading here. At five times, the Periscope telephoto lens has a higher native zoom than the four times one of the S20 Ultra. As a result, the photos at the default five times zoom are a bit sharper here. At night, image quality from the main camera is awesome, with wide dynamic range, great detail, and good color saturation. Of course, the ultrawide camera trails behind a bit quality-wise, but it's still good. Zooming with the Periscope lens at night can be hit or miss. If you get a shot out of the actual telephoto, the results are good but you might get a lower quality digital crop from the main camera instead. Night mode does a great job on each of the three cameras in brightening the exposure and improving the detail in highlights and shadows. It even forces the telephoto camera for its five times shots, no digital zooming here. The selfie camera is 10 megapixels and has autofocus. It takes pretty good photos that are improved over the ones from the Note 10 Plus, despite similar specs. There's nice detail and great dynamic range. The colors are a bit muted though, in most cases, you would normally shoot videos in the 4K resolution. These come out excellent from all three cams. You can also shoot in an 8K resolution from the main cam. This does offer more detail than 4K, but the file size is massive and you'll end up with a cropped field of view. The Note 20 Ultra is not a perfect phone, and we would have liked to see better battery life as well as a display that can support the QHD resolution and the high refresh rate like a lot of other competing phones. In every other department, the Note 20 Ultra packs quite the punch. And if you want the ultimate smartphone with the stylus, really, there is no other phone to look at, even with the crazy price tag. However, if you're not set on the S Pen, then the Galaxy S20 Ultra might be the Note's biggest competition. The screens are almost identical, the chipsets are identical, and the cameras are comparable, especially in low light. You'll be getting some significant price savings without any significant cost to features. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.